23 and I am here for a part two of Webkin's crafts you can do during quarantine to pass the time. Some stuff has happened between this and basically the, the last one. A windstorm knocked over a, a tree and we've been cleaning it up. There's a, there's a cat over there in that brush pile for a size comparison. So that's what's been going on in my life. And as far as shows, yes, I finished I Love Lucy. And I was gonna start binging MASH, and then I found out the Carol Burnett show is on Amazon Prime. And yeah, I've been watching that a lot more than I probably should. Anyways, as for what we are going to be doing today, we have a lot of cool little crafts. Lots of you guys were asking how to make this cloak. So of course, I'm going to show you how to do that, but we're not gonna show that right away. First, I have a few more non-sewing crafts that you can do, and then we're gonna get into some more stitching, and then I will show you the cloak and how to actually make something like this. So for the first craft, it's pretty obvious. Lots of you have probably done this, but make a beaded necklace for your webkins. This is something that's really simple. I actually uh, have one that broke here a long time ago, so I could fix that real quick. One thing that helps when doing these is to tie a knot at one end, and then you can just slide the beads on and they will not come off on this side. Just makes it a little bit easier to build this. Lots of people have plenty of beads just laying around and you might have some string. It might not be this stretchy string, which this stretchy string is typically the best, but you can use whatever you have. It don't really matter. And there is the little old necklace that I made a long time ago. Now, these are pretty simple to make. Lots of people just enjoy them. I like to tie knots on both sides, by the way, just so it stays together in case anything happens while tying. So I know it seems like a pretty obvious thing, but I haven't seen a lot of people talk about this like ever. But in order to keep knots from these types of stretchy strings from coming undone, since they're highly prone to, you should put something like nail polish over the top of it. Nail polish will just dry on and hold it together. So just put it on there, wait a few minutes to dry, and then you can snip off the excess string. I don't actually wear nail polish, as you guys probably could tell. I actually really hate nail polish. So we bought this like 10 years ago just for this. Now that isn't something too very special, but I have something that is that I reckon a lot of you probably haven't heard of before. I have basically forgotten about it. So it's another thing you can do with beads, the string, and surprisingly enough, safety pins. You can actually make a bracelet out of safety pins. Well, this isn't really something I'd particularly put on a webkins because I feel like it'd just be really, really thick and it would take an awful lot of safety pins. Like seriously, this is gonna take up a lot of safety pins if you're actually gonna complete this. I'm not going to complete one right now. I'm just gonna show you how to do it. So I need a bunch of safety pins that are the same size. Anyways, what we are going to do is we're gonna take some beads. I'm gonna use the small beads here, not these big ones because I don't want them to bulge out and you are going to open up the safety pin and just pick out a few beads, make whatever kind of pattern you like, and put that on the safety pin. Close it up and rinse and repeat and do this until you have about enough at least to start your pattern. All right, so I made up a little stack of some. You don't want to cover all of your safety pins in beads. With this, you would actually be using two separate pieces of string, but just to show an example, and because I don't actually want to finish this, I'm only going to use one, but typically you would use two. You're gonna take your string and thread it through the hole of one side of the safety pin, and your second string, you will go and thread through the other hole. It's a lot more of a tighter fit. Just snap it through like that and then you're going to take a blank safety pin and you want to do it in the reverse order so you see the snap is on this side so the snap of the blank one is going to be on this side thread them through your twin strings and that is the start of your bracelet and then you just keep on going in that exact same pattern you can also do this with any size safety pin you want it's just going to change the thickness of the bracelet and how many beads you're going to have to use to fill it out all right, I think that's about as big as I'm gonna make it for this example. So, obviously the look of it is gonna change depending on your pattern and you do want to fill out the beads and I didn't even use all the same size beads. This is what it's gonna look like about the time you're done. And you can see why I said it would be a little big for a Webkin's necklace just because it's thick and I use small safety pins to begin with. But it might even work as like a Webkin's bracelet or something being thick like that. So that's just one idea. I haven't heard this talked about since I was like a little kid. So that is something interesting. Oh, that stuff's getting hot staying in the sun. It is a hot day today, I might add. And of course, I mentioned it last time. I'm gonna mention it this time. You can always knit your Webkinz a scarf. About five stitches is typically good for a Webkinz scarf. I said last time, and I'll say it again, I am not the one to show you 
how to knit. I am very slow and I my stuff don't look that great. <laughs> you know, like all those old shows and stuff, they totally lied. Like you see these women going ahead and knitting and you know, you see them start off and they have like three rows done and then a time skip of like 20 minutes and they've done like 50 rows and it's like, oh, I've made this all in just a short amount. No, that's a freaking lie. <laughs> Knitting is so time consuming. It's more time consuming than making these stupid bracelets. It's, ah, I'm at a weird angle here. That's also why I'm struggling a bit, but yeah. You got some yarn. You can even knit with freaking pencils. Little scarf. This is a five stitch one. And when they're so short like this, they kind of curl up, which is kind of cute. Actually, you can even make a Webkin's headband or something. That'd, that'd be really cool, actually. But uh, yeah, I just I just wanted to point that out. Now we're gonna get into actual sewing stuff. So finally, I feel I'm more comfortable and experienced in. Now last time, I didn't get a chance to show you all the sewing things that I wanted to, but this is gonna pick off basically where that left off. Remember this fabric and I said I wanted to make a coat out of it? Well, that's what we're gonna be doing today. So I've already started it. I've got most of it done. All it needs is another sleeve because I didn't show you guys how to make sleeves. And because this fabric doesn't really fray and I kind of like the bushiness sticking out, I'm not gonna be like stitching the edges. So makes it a quick project. So first thing I'm going to do is turn it inside out. All right, I always like to sew on the webkins. That way I see what I'm doing. Be careful not to actually sew yourself to the webkins. Okay, and I already cut out one sleeve, but now I need to do the other. So I need to make this match the other sleeve. Typically I do like both sleeves at once and I don't space them out. So I don't have to do this type of secondary measuring. Once again, I want to point out if you're doing stuff with fabric, invest in a good pair of scissors. All right, now to start snipping, it's gonna leave fuzz everywhere. I'm gonna do a little hump. It's okay, we're gonna go ahead and trim this a little bit more later and just keep going straight and then I think that should be long enough. There we have our strip. It should look kind of like this. Holding it up like this, I can see it comes down about as long as this one does. You want the sides to match, obviously. Okay, next step. That's my other sewing project I'm working on right now. We're gonna, we're gonna get to that. I'm gonna take some thread. This is the thread I've been using because it matches this color. And I want to take a good needle. Let me just find one in case you're wondering. I've gotten so bored during this quarantine, I actually sat down and cleaned all my needles, which I needed to, because one got a bunch of glue all over it years and years ago and then just got all the other needles covered in glue and and yeah now it's finally fixed okay there's my needle that I want to use so I'm gonna take the thread and I don't really need an arm's length uh that that should be good yeah and people find this gross and probably would especially right now but if you're having trouble threading the needle lick the string the moisture will kind of make all the little loose stringy ends stick together and make it a lot easier to thread so get tie that up make a nice big knot so that way I'm sure it don't pull through and snip off the excess as per usual. All right, now to the actual sewing part. I just realized I, did, I could have made a big mistake here. This is on upside down. <laughs> don't, don't do that. Make sure you're not sewing it upside down. That, that could be very, very bad. I keep forgetting because this top has so much excess so it can fold over. Okay, so I didn't actually cut this wrong. Good. All right, now, this is important. Before you start stitching, make sure it's the right way. There have been plenty of times where I've been sewing something inside out and I have gone like this. Yeah, that, that, that don't work. That don't work. Anyways, this hump is for over the shoulder right here. If you don't cut out this little hump, then it'll, the sleeve will pull up right here and it'll just, it won't look good. I'm going to lay it over top and kind of run this around where the hole would be. And I want it to start facing the inside like this, not the side, not the middle, but the inside corner like this. This is because this is where you're least likely to see the seam. Webkins, you're gonna see them from the front and you're gonna see them from the side, but you're not really gonna be seeing them typically a whole lot from the inside. That'll be the best way to hide the seam. So that is where I am going to start. And since this isn't a frame fabric, I don't need to fold it over. And I did that whole lay over the shoulder thing to try and get a good idea of where it's, I need to start it. And I also know there's a lot of excess here. Don't worry, I'm gonna cut it off later. I just wanna be 100% sure I'm not going to need it. It's always better to have too much fabric than too little. And this fabric's actually kinda hard to stitch because of all the fuzz, it's kinda hard to see. I can't even do my typical back and forth motion with it because I can't really see what I'm doing. So this, this is gonna take a little bit, but it's gonna be simple, just a basic stitch right back and forth. All right, now I've stitched all the way around and I have this excess fabric. And now that I see where the two pieces are gonna join, I can cut off the excess. All right, and now 
that's all done. I can just take this thread, I don't need to cut it again, and just start going back and forth all the way up. There's a guy riding a lawnmower down the road. I mean, I don't know why he'd be doing that. I wouldn't be riding on a lawnmower in these roads. So how are y'all enjoying the quarantine so far? I have played so many video games. I, I have Animal Crossing sitting in my room, but I haven't played it because I've been playing everything else. Guys, Ori and the Will of the Wisps is so good. And I wanna cry. They did it again, they did it again! Yeah, I think I'm about done. I want to leave a little bit of this unsewn just for the, the style I'm going in. And now to tie it off. Maybe I should have done this a little bit later in the day. It's just, oh God, it's hot. Between these cuts, I'm going and just sitting in the shade to sew. It's, ha. This is a little bit uneven right here, so I'm just gonna kind of do a little bit of snip work on that to make it nice and even, and there we go. And then going to slip this back on, just fold it up like that, and yeah, it, it matches pretty okay. The cut probably could have been a little bit better, I'm not gonna lie, I had to rip out the stitching after I started because I didn't get the, the hump right. I probably should have made it a little bit bigger. It's a jacket, but it doesn't, it doesn't have a zipper or anything, and I'm not pulling in a zipper. I've never done that before, and I don't intend to. But what I can put in are buttons. Or you could also do snaps if, if you want, but I, I like the aesthetic of buttons. Ooh, a white button. Do I, how many of these do I have actually? Ooh, I think I got enough. Okay, I'm gonna use these buttons. I like them. Buttons themselves are really easy. You could probably figure out how to stitch them on your own. There's nothing to them, honestly. I'm gonna straighten out the cut a little bit on this first though, because that that kind of frays out a little bit and I don't I don't want that. I'm kind of shaping this as I go, in case you haven't been able to tell that already. This should be good, so I'm gonna put the first button down here, so I'm just gonna stick the needle in, and then take a button, thread one of the loops in, and just pull it through. You can sew it crisscross or parallel, I kind of, I do whatever. Oftentimes I just, I over sew buttons and I actually can't move them, so I'm gonna try not to do that this time. There we go, there's our first button. Okay, now the second button, I think I'm gonna do the top one first. Did that, something like up here? I think up here would be okay. If I don't like it, I can always take it out. So button number two. And I always like to do the top and the bottom ones first. That way you can perfectly align the middle one. Just try to make sure they all match. That's the important thing. As soon as I cut the recording, I realized I changed my mind. I don't want them this close to the edge. Normally I would, because when you're doing buttons, typically you would take the scissors and then you'd fold over and make a little incision and pull the button through. I'm not doing that with this jacket today. Instead, I'm doing something I've never done, but I'm excited to try it. I'm going to take some embroidery floss and make little loops around it. Now that's what these bigger needles are actually for. They're not to be easier to thread. They're they're for like stuff like like this. I think I'll be able to thread this through. I think I I think I think I got to look at it again. Ha 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 ha. No, no, go through, go through. Come on. Just there, yeah, I got it through. <laughs> All right, now I do this. I'm going to tie a knot at one end. We're not going for the double loop thing because we don't particularly want that here. This is already gonna be a challenge. So I'm gonna line it up here and I want to come up about right here. That looks right. And then just pull it up. And then I just gotta go ahead and thread it back down a little bit higher to make sure it's not in the same groove. And now I can unthread the needle. Okay, now how much of this do I actually need out for the, you know, some, that, 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 that amount should be good. So now I'm gonna just tie it off. And there, I made a little button loop. And now, hopefully I can get the button through. Moment of truth, yeah, look at that. Oh, that's cool. Okay, well, I'm gonna do that again. I'm like so proud of myself over something that I knew was very well possible and very easy to do. That's one thing. You just get creative. Do whatever, you know? All right. Ow. Oh, I just poked myself. Okay, that, that happens. Some people use a thimble or something. I've never used a thimble. They're annoying. They fall off your finger. They're not comfortable. Why would you ever even bother with a thimble for crying out loud? And there is number two. All right, really cool. I like how that looks. I think that's genuinely interesting. And I'm gonna get the third button later since I don't wanna spend too much time out here in the sun. This is, oh God. Poor Tasha wearing this furry warm coat when it's like, how hot is it out here actually? It's 74 degrees. Oh my God, it's okay, it's gonna, it, it's gonna go down. 
in like four hours. Okay, now after a little break to let it cool down some, we are going to be continuing with the sewing for the part that you guys are probably actually wanting to know about, and that is how to make this type of cloak. Now this is actually pretty simple. It's basically just a square with a hood and some trim. The overall shape of it is not very complicated. This particular one was made from satin. I just wanted the shininess of this. So satin or silk, that would be my personal pick. But you can make this out of anything you want. As a matter of fact, I did a concept piece earlier that is made out of a quilting square. So one quilting square is big enough to do one of these for a signature if you so wish. But I found my fabric, which meant I have even more satin than I thought. I don't just have purple and pink. I got this really pretty blue. Isn't that nice? I'm going to be making another one of these and I will be making it for Cupcake because she deserves a cloak. But this should fit basically any signature because it's just a square with a hood. This is really wrinkled. It's been sitting in a bag in the closet for probably like 10 years. For the cut of it, I want to try and find a, a straight side. I'm just going to set Cupcake on and you can kind of like put it over top of your webkins and see how far you actually want it to go on them, how long you want it to be. That's all up to you. You can make it any length you want. And once you have that all figured out, you're just going to take your scissors and you're going to cut out a square rectangle-ish shape. Remember to make it about an inch bigger than you want because especially with fabric like this with how much it frays, you're gonna be folding it over twice and you're going to lose about an inch total because each one of these folds will take probably about a half inch. I don't think that's long enough actually. I. Okay, well I'm gonna start over already. <laughs> Just go to another corner, it's okay. If the edges aren't straight, don't worry about it. You can always fix it later. That's the great thing about sewing. We're just getting a baseline right now. So there we have our square-ish part. It's a little more of a rectangle because of how it lays over the webkins to make it more of an even length on like the front and the back. You want to have a little more on the sides. So the next step for this is going to be cutting out the place you want for the hood. So basically you're making the head. I want the back to be straight, so I'm going to take the front here. And you want to actually cut a small head area because you want it to fit snugly around the neck. That was something I learned when I did this concept piece, which you can see the neck area isn't very snug. And if I lay it over Cupcake, little red rat and hood, but it doesn't, it doesn't fit very well around the neck and it kind of lays down like that. You see how it lays? I don't particularly like that. So that's why you want it to be small. To actually get this right, I cut out a small piece of cardboard and used it as a guideline but I don't have that small piece of cardboard anymore, so I'm just gonna use this little thing of ribbon. <laughs> Ignore the sound of the chainsaw, my dad's cutting cutting wood. <laughs> and so I'm just gonna use this as a rough guideline, kind of, and get a circle cut out. And we're gonna even it out later. We just wanna get the right shape. So that made about like that, and... All right, so the width is right. You can see how it comes nice and snug to the back of the neck, but it needs to be a little bit deeper because, you know, when we fold this over, Otherwise, this isn't really gonna connect very well and we want it to connect. So I'm just gonna make this a little bit deeper and go about an inch deeper and see how that looks. Oh yeah, that's that's much, much better. Okay, it's nice and tight around the neck because remember, we're going to do the double folding over. So it will come a little bit further away from the neck, but I say that is our cape basically done. I mean, obviously when you saw I fold it up, it doesn't quite line up perfectly. So I might want to go ahead and just like snip off this little bit of the tail to straighten the edges. That is the main part of your cape. Now the hood is trickier. I'm not gonna lie. I hate doing hoods. I think they are one of the worst things on the planet. Hoods are awful. <laughs> they take up a bunch of fabric too. So actually this part I cut out earlier that I didn't think would work, that might actually be perfect for this. So I'm gonna take this fabric and kind of just lay it to the point that I want on the webkins. And you want plenty of excess, because see, when I made this, the stitching goes nice and snug against the neck. However, I wanted some looseness so it kind of would fold over. That's one of the reasons I wanted this satin fabric, because it folds a lot easier than something like this. But once again, I'm gonna cut this a little longer than I want it to be. I just like having that excess to work with and I don't really need all this slack back here. I'm just gonna kinda cut a circle. You probably could just fold this in half and cut it, but I'm not gonna be doing that right now. We're gonna do a lot more cutting after it's off the main piece, just to make it easier. And that is the start of our hood. And now comes a lot of pinning. <laughs> so obviously I wanna leave plenty of an area in the front here 
so that way you know we can be folding it up and I'm actually not entirely sure I cut this out big enough I probably should cut a little bit longer because I forgot about one thing this little bit of stitching at the top you might think oh well I can just stitch up the back and I won't need to cut the top then it won't lay right you have to stitch it all the way through see this this part right here it's not there's cut fabric this is not holding anything together this is just keeping the crease because otherwise it won't lay right but I am going to start pins so I don't actually know anything about pinning all I know is needle and from here on you just do what you want. I don't know if I'm gonna go the same style hood I did this. This one, you can see it has a point. I did that because it's meant to be kind of like a wizard robe in a sense. Because I actually based this design off of Merlina from Sonic and the Black Knight. And she's the royal wizard and stuff. And she kind of has a robe like that. I say kind of because the only thing that's in common is that this is the color. <laughs> so you can pin up in any shape you want. This one was meant to be like a wizard's cloak. This is just meant to be a regular cloak, so I don't think I'm gonna do the triangle. But if you want to do the triangle, it's pretty simple. Pin it kind of like this, make, make make a right angle. So this is where my pinning left me. This nice gentle curve like that, because I don't want a flat spike. So now what I'm just gonna do is I am just going to take the scissors, and actually I think I'm gonna take this off real quick, just just to be sure I don't accidentally clip cupcake. And it's not even, again, for crying out loud, I really, this is like the third time this has happened. I keep pulling it off to cut it. And just gonna move a few pins to even it up a little bit. And just cut in a gentle curve around the back of the pins. And there, and I'm just gonna kinda go straight off here and leave the shaping that part later. Now I'm gonna get all these sharp pins off before I stab myself again. And that is the basic shape of the hood. Now let me see how it lays. I think that'll be quite nice. Okay, now I can go ahead and shape it up a little bit. So the hood part itself ends here and I realize this is unevenly done, which is not a very good thing for me because I don't want that, but uh, I didn't leave enough slack. This is kind of why you want more slack, but it's it'll be okay. And I'm just gonna kind of round this off a little bit more. If this would stop folding, you know, I'm just gonna do it one piece at a time. I had to use satin, but I forgot how slippery satin was. Oh boy. That still has a lot of overlay, but if after we stitch it, I kind of want to lay over a little bit. This will be fine. So if you don't want to do all the pinning up work, this is the basic shape of the hood. And this part here should be like a triangle if you are going for a style more akin to this. But now we actually have a little bit more shaping to do with this piece here because we don't want to just wrap around and end in this corner. If we want it to be kind of like this and flow more evenly, snip off a little bit of the corner and kind of just round it out a little bit like this. So that way the hood flows in. Of course, this part is optional. If you want to be tight around the neck the whole way around, you don't have to do this. And there is our basic shape. So that's the cutout. Now all that's left is the sewing. And I like to actually stitch the hood first. So I am going to start off by doing that. Of course, making sure it's inside out. Then, oh goodness, I actually don't have much of this thread. Uh, I think I have another color that's similar to that, maybe in the house, okay. Anyways, I like starting at the base of the hood and working my way up. So, I'm just gonna stitch it through once and then going to do the double fold over and pull it through again. And then I will see you when I'm done with the hood. So here is how the hood came out. I'm actually not too crazy about the shape. I think I realized what went wrong is that this curve was too gentle. It should have been a little straighter along this end to fall back more and then curve in the back, but I'm not gonna fix it. You obviously could at this point, but I'm not gonna bother. So the next step would be sewing the hood to the cape. By the way, I went looking for more of this thread and this is the closest I found. <laughs> so uh, I don't have any other dark blue. This is my second darkest blue. All the rest is sky blue. Why do I have so much sky blue? I can use the purple. <laughs> Anyways, you might notice the hood has a lot more fabric here than this does. And that is okay. That's actually kind of how I made this. It does make the stitching take longer, but I think it looks okay. So to start off, I'm going to take the corner where we see here 
and I'm going to kind of line it up. Basically, you want this to be a continuous straight line virtually. That's the goal of what I'm doing here. And then once again, I'm going to take my needle, thread it through, then fold it over twice so it hides the seam, and then pull it through once again. Actually, I made the same mistake again. Hold on, I made this mistake several times when I was making my own hood. Okay, when you line this up, you might wanna do a test fold to see if it actually lines up where you want. You have to actually put this so it goes over the corner a little bit. And if the edges don't align perfectly, it's okay, because it's all gonna be folded over and sewn again anyways with the trim. So you don't really have to worry about that too much, and also why you don't have to worry about like having an ugly knot right here at the end. Now, that should line up more, and the hood shouldn't be it's still a little bit inwards. It's, it's okay, it's okay. <laughs> Since there is so much of this hood fabric, it might not be a half bad idea. Where'd my pins go? There is a lone safety pin in my thing of pins, and I don't know why, but I'm just gonna take it because I like safety pins so much better than regular pins. Take the middle of the hood and then pin it to, ow. Did that again, gosh darn it. To the middle of the cape. Now you have a really big visual representation of how much more fabric you have, and this can make things a little bit easier, because what we're gonna be doing as we go along is we're gonna be scrunching this a little bit at a time. Not too much, otherwise you'll get folds. Basically, so this gets all evened out, and then you shouldn't have any excess by the time you get to the middle. And then we gotta keep scrunching, and just do the exact same thing until we get all the way to the end here. This actually is not very easy to do, so I'm gonna show you what I do here. I'm gonna take a little bit of this fabric. If you need to, it might not be a half bad idea to put like another pin in this, just to kind of give you a little hand. Just to hold it in place, it can make things a little bit easier, to be honest. And then just take the fabric and try your best to fold it over. It's not easy when you got all this slack. Fold, fold, fold. Fold! I think it folded. Did it? Yeah, it did. I'm just gonna take it. Ah, oh, that looks like garbage. Oh, it already came undone. Okay. Just <laughs> fold it in half and then fold it again. And okay. Now hold it like that. And then I'm gonna take the needle. It's all the way at the end of this long thread. And then just stick it in and quickly work back and forth while holding the pinch. And there. You. Pull the needle through, and uh, well, you got a little bit of slack gone, and you're just gonna keep doing that until you get to the middle, and you've got a lot of ground to pick up. I'll see you when it's done. And here's how that turned out. Does it look very good? Absolutely not, it looks like a wreck. But keep in mind, you're not gonna be seeing that. So now, if we put it on, that doesn't look half bad actually. I was expecting it to look maybe a little bit worse. <laughs> yeah, the hole around the head could definitely have stood to be a little bit smaller, but that's that's okay. And I know the hood falls over like this, but keep in mind after you sew it up with the trim, it'll stay up a little bit more. And you can always you can fold this fabric back as far as you want. Yeah, this wasn't a very good job done. I was kind of rushing it just to get it done, but that is the basis of the cape. And of course, it wouldn't be complete without trim. Typically trim will look like this or like this. This is actually the exact same trim I used on this. So if you if you want the trim, here's the brand, here's the, the name and stuff on it. I got this at Walmart. But for this blue, I figured a color like this gold would actually be really, really pretty because blue and, blue and gold look so good together. But I'm actually not gonna be putting this on here right now because trim takes forever. Fun story, this is actually my first attempt at doing trim and I think it turned out lovely, but I learned it's the devil and steals your time. We don't need cupcake anymore because, ah, I told you this project would come in, this is a second hood in purple. And look at this ribbon, isn't it so pretty? I got this off of Etsy, I think it's from India or something. It is so, so pretty. Look at all of these very tiny stitches, oh my god. Just to show you real quick, how I am doing this. What I'm doing is I am folding over the inside, of course, to hide the fraying, and then threading the needle through. And then I don't want the thread to go straight through the ribbon because I don't want it to be visible, so I'm taking it and looping it through the back of some of the strings here and pulling that through. 
I'm pushing the needle through very, very closely because keep in mind, I'm going up here, not over. So there's not more speed. Ow, I did that again for crying out loud. And it's pulling it tight. Rinse and repeat over and over and over again. It is quite time consuming and you might notice it kind of flails out here. So that's the way most trim is when it's done with stuff, but this doesn't. And the reason is I double stitched it. I stitched it on both sides. Now this trim, because there was no back to it, I basically just had to thread through in places and hope you don't see it. The idea is just to hide the stitching as much as possible. And also at the corners, rather than cutting the ribbon and folding it over and trying to keep it from fraying again, which with something like this is very hard. You can actually kind of see a little bit of the corner here where it ends off. And you can see underneath that it's a little bit black and it can't bend. That's because I dipped it in super glue. <laughs> That's my only way to keep it. It, tur it turned the whole thing like black. You can either leave it like this if you so please or get it so it is completely flesh with the outfit like this. But at the corners, folding felt like the easier option and the thing that used less ribbon. All in all, for the size of the hood that this turned out to be, it ended up using about five, five and a half feet of trim. So keep that in mind. I'm trying to keep all the bugs off of her for crying out loud. They're like attracted to her. So seeing as this has like a threadbare back and this had little loops to go through, you might be wondering, how the heck am I gonna sew this on that blue one? The answer is I really, really don't know. I, I'm just playing it by ear at this point. Oh, and I almost completely forgot. This little pin here, it's not actually a pin, it's just an earring. So any type of earring stud you have should work fine like this. That would work just okay. This came from the same set that this did, which just came from one of like $8 sets from Walmart. <laughs> oh, and look at this little owl. That would also be really cute there. Yeah, so just anything like that. Anyways, we are not quite done yet, even though the sun wants to believe we are. I have one more thing to show you that I think would actually be really, really cool. I made something like this a long time ago, and I just really like it. It is a bag. Pack. There's actually nothing really important in it. I just stuffed it with tissue so it would keep its shape. Also really great if you have allergies. <laughs> Anyways, something like this was actually really, really simple. I made this with very little fabric. That's why a lot of it's not a continuous piece, but I will go ahead and show you how to make a little backpack like this. And something like this shouldn't take too long. And I figured I can make it out of this. This is an old bed skirt. So I'm actually gonna save the stitched part for a little bit later. See if I can make some pockets with that. So I'm just gonna kind of slice up and then I'm just gonna cut a long strip. Ooh, that went off angle. You do want it to be very, very long and I will show you why in a bit. And then we're just gonna go back. Now what we ended up with is an extremely long strip and it's a little bit uneven. That's okay, we'll, we'll fix it later. So what you wanna do is you wanna fold it up to be about the length of what you want your backpack to be. Keep in mind, after it gets stuffed, it's gonna, it's gonna sprawl out a little bit. So actually, actually I cut this really, really long. Holy crap. Okay, so I'm gonna try to make one about this size. Basically you want to be three times the height of what you want your backpack to be. And then I'm gonna cut it roughly the length you want. Keep in mind, I'm using a fraying fabric once again. So I'm gonna have to double fold. And that is the start of our backpack. Next, what I am going to do is with our front piece, kind of round it off just so it has more of this type of look. Of course, you don't have to go all the way down if you don't want like a knapsack kind of look like this, but I do. I like it, I'm a sucker for that kind of stuff. It has gotten very cloudy now. Why did it have to get cloudy now when the light's going away? That's not fair. It's not fair. And now I gotta take this edge that I cut way too big and just gonna cut a square off of this. And you can round it if you want, which I am going to do because I like the roundish thing. And I'm gonna cut a second one for the other side. And this is another thing that you could just make out of an old t-shirt or something. It's a lot of fun actually. This stuff, this stuff is so useful. I love this backpack so much. And that is like all the pieces that we actually need. Now we can just, Get to sewing. This one also has the stitching on the outside just so that we can see it for the aesthetic. I, this was like done with the very little bit of fabric and the last of that color of thread. So I was like really pushing to get it all done with that. All right, now we're gonna take this and flip it inside out. 
this isn't yeah this is the outside and I'm gonna take one of these sides and we're gonna match it up at the base corner do the same fold thread and then double fold and then this is gonna be pretty easy we're just gonna take this and stitch all around the sides pulling it right to it and that is the basis of our little backpack I only did one side and I actually cut it a little shorty because I realized how long it was getting so but I showed you how to do the cuts for this and what you can do because after you turn it inside out you're just gonna fold it over and you can tell I shortened it a lot as for the straps something like this you could just take string you could take some of this exact same material and just fold it into a little log and sew it and use that for straps or you could crochet something if if in you feel like it because, oh god, if there's one thing I'm worse at than knitting, it's crocheting. This is all I know how to do in crocheting. I, I kid you not. I, you know, and this is also like the only, this is the closest color I have that would match this. For someone that has an awful lot of fabric, I have a very little bit of yarn. Anyways, I hope this video has been helpful if you plan to make any of these things. And if you do, let me know. I think that'd be really, really cool. And I know lots of you guys are asking about this cloak saying you wanted to make it. So I hope, I hope that it turns out better than the one I did for you today did. I don't think I have any reason to do a part three of this. I showed virtually everything I know. So have fun crafting and I'll see you in the next one later. Mm -hmm.